Hi, an important thing when working with wireless microphone is that you have to turn them on. I had forgotten to turn on mine and I made a video about how to uh, disassemble a classic uh, brake caliper used on old bicycles, old road bicycles and similar. And in this video I have also made a, a demonstration of how I can use parts of two uh, broken brakes to make one that is decently working. I used the one part of a cheap Chinese brake that I could find in order to this the holding part in order to make the higher quality over 50 years old brake work and I will try to synchronize the video so that I can explain what I'm doing but I think that it is most important to see what I'm doing and that is shown in the video so it will probably be far from perfect but uh, it, <laughs> it's probably in the competition for the most boring video on the internet against <laughs> competing against the dripping faucet video but I still hope it will be useful to anyone who has similar problems restoring old bicycles and so on so that's what I will do and that's what you will hopefully be able to see in this video I started recording this after I had already disassembled old brakes thinking uh, that it might be useful so this is what it looks like when they are assembled I have a front brake that is the one uh, in the bottom with the longer screw and the, the rear brake that is that has a shorter screw for mounting because it doesn't uh, come through the fork which is usually thicker uh, the rear ones are usually mounted on some uh, steel plate or something and the thing that I put down uh, below is what the part that was damaged on on the old brake and that I uh, took out of a new Chinese brake of poor quality and here you can see where the spring is attached against the, the brake calipers. These brake calipers have like sort of protrusions made and another patent is to have this uh, like sort of a kink in a, in a spring. So that is for brake calipers that do not have any protrusions for the spring to push against and so the spring is made like a hook to, to hold the, the calipers. And if you want to reuse a spring from a different model, you can always create that hook in a vise by bending it or straighten it. So, and depending on how high the, the spring uh, puts pressure on the calipers, it needs to be thicker and stronger or less strong and thinner. So those are some differences. And here I'm showing this part. This is what I was lacking in the old brake that holds the, that has like a slot to hold the spring in place and that is what I was lacking and the other important parts are washers that are put uh, right after the spring before the first caliper then another washer in between this is a plastic washer here and then the other caliper or brake arm sorry and then finally another spring before the lock nuts and this is the Shimano model it's of a bit more higher quality a lot higher, higher quality and it has all the washers made of steel and I will try to show what they look like. They are not as visible, as easily visible as on that Chinese model, but they exist. And here, it, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I caught the part on camera, but if it's visible, but it has three washers, just like these washers that you can see on the on the cloth here, the the three like so small small washers. That's from this uh, old original brake and here what I'm doing is just cleaning it up before assembling it. If you're not sure how to reassemble it, it's usually possible to put it only one way. Because here you can see this part where the hosing uh, ends, the cable stop. It is put to be right below the part where the cable is, is held in place, where it's tightened. So if I try to put it any other way, those two would not be aligned. That's one way to tell. And another thing to pay attention to is uh, that if I try to put them the other way around, they will not fit because of the shape of those calipers. Because if I put this in the wrong place in the front, you can see that they will be at an angle. While if I put it behind, they will slide and be perfectly aligned. So that's another thing if you haven't uh, paid attention and taken photos how it is assembled that's that's one way to avoid making a mistake and the, the this is uh, over 50 years old brake caliper that is of high quality but it had that uh, part that holds the spring in place broken 
it it broke apart almost completely and i thought it, thought it wasn't safe to run a brake like that so i took apart uh, cheaper the only one the best quality that i could find <laughs> in my city but it's a cheap chinese brake of few dollars cost and here it came with these like a uh, sort of convex washers like they have a sort of a, a band like a circle i'm not sure how to explain it in english but that is designed to if you're pla placing it on a fork that that is like a round tube and there are no flat uh, brake mounting points made wherever it is that you're mounting it that's when you use those washers sometimes one if the the round part is only on one side or two if it's on both sides so we in, in this case we won't be needing those but we will be needing oh sorry one more thing this is the the way the part where you tighten the bra the brake calipers to the frame and you see the threads don't go all the way down so if the place where you're mounting is too thin you will need to add some washers to avoid the nut when you tighten it to be running uh, against that flat section you want it to be engaged on the on the threads and not damage the threads and try to screw it on when th where there are no no more threads and this is the washer from the chinese brake it says made in china didn't zoom that in very well and the only thing that i'm using of, from that brake is this part with the it's not visible <laughs> sorry with the nut for mounting and it has this uh, part that holds the spring in place that is what i was lacking and in this case it is welded onto the the nut it's or or pressed very tightly it cannot be moved so that's why i also use that nut as it came together and this is how you assemble it you put the spring and the washer to hold the spring in place and then you add the brake arms one and then the other always adding one washer between and before i assemble it i will use the opportunity to lubricate it all properly you can use some fine spray like i, I like using this uh, teflon spray by motip but when I'm completely disassembling it, I prefer to use grease. It lasts longer, even though it attracts more dirt. So it's a trade-off. If you ride in sandy, dusty conditions without mudguards, you might want to always be using some thinner lubricant more frequently and vice versa if the situation is different. And here I've lubricated the spring and now I'm lubricating the washer on both sides. I want just a thin coat of, of grease. On both sides so that it all slides nicely and now i will place it in its place all these washers on this model are of the same thickness same diameter so the the order in which i'm placing them is not really crucial now in order to sleep better i will also lubricate the the brake arm even though it's enough to lubricate either only the washer or the brake arm but i sleep better by lubricating both and all the excess grease gets pushed out anyway so i can just wipe it off and i'm certain that uh, everything else is nicely lubricated and i hope hope that the extra grease will prevent any water or dirt from entering in between as easily and so that it stays lubricated and works nicely more uh, for a longer period so here i'm just placing the first arm brake arm as I've discussed in the previous section of the video, which one goes first, that's important to note. Then goes the, the other washer and the other brake arm. I'm again lubricating all the contact areas with grease. Here it is. And finally, the last, last washer before I put the lock nut and the nut to hold it in place. Okay, so here it's almost completely assembled. And for the holding it in place i like using these uh, nuts that have like a plastic washer like plastic insert because they don't unscrew themselves uh, due to vibrations or similar they are quite sturdy and uh, but i will also use uh, uh, another nut so that plastic nut will be used as, a, as a, just a lock nut so even though you can use only two nuts if you lock them against each other it's safe but this is for me even even safer it, it's break after all so here i'm putting just one normal nut and then the one with the plastic insert that is a bit more difficult to screw in and unscrew but it stays in place and on the other side because this section that holds the the spring in this 
on this model <laughs> on this nut on this screw is uh, held in place i don't have to use any lock nuts on the other side otherwise i would have first put some lock nuts on the other side when i roughly see how much protrusion of the nut i need on the front and first lock it up on the back and then do the fine adjustment on the front here i'm making sure not to use this uh, wrench this socket to turn the the first screw i'm only using it to screw in the the lock nut the one with the plastic insert and here i i could i could uh, engage and put the spring in place right away and here i'm showing how it is done i just put it in on one side these ones are with hooks because this brake arms don't have any protrusions to hold the springs in place so i put it on one side then i uh, spread the calipers and then put it on the other side and that's it but that will give me some false uh, readings when i'm trying to assess whether the brake arms are moving freely and whether they have too much uh, wiggle room too much play so <laughs> moving too freely uh, for that reason i will dis disengage this spring and now it will just be flipping around but not doing any any work because i want to first test for play and i'm not sure if it can be seen in the video but there is a significant amount of play and unfortunately you cannot hear any rattling because i had forgotten to turn turn on my microphone and so what i'm doing here is tightening the the first nut to eliminate the play and as i'm tightening it i'm checking for play of course because i didn't tighten the lock nut as i'm checking for play it gets unscrewed a bit so but i want to see the the rough uh, idea to get a, a, an idea of how much i need to to screw it in before i start screwing in the the lock nut and now that i'm more or less happy i'm turning in and screwing in the lock nut and i'm paying attention to see whether the not the other nut is being turned along with the lock nut if that is the case you need to use two wrenches here i took another wrench just just for show and this is the principle of how you finally tighten it to keep them in place once you're happy so i'm turning the nut anti-clockwise unscrewing it and i'm turning the lock nut clockwise but it's not moving because it's pl plastic to make this procedure a bit less fiddly you might want to hold the, the bolt uh, that holds the whole thing in, in uh, together in a vise making sure not to damage the threads either by screwing in two lock nuts on the other side and then pressing them in a vise holding it in place so it doesn't turn and so you can more easily adjust it here what i'm doing is right now i released the the lock nut because it was too tight it was a binding a bit and now i have just unscrewed the other nut a bit to press it against the lock nut and now i will try to tighten the lock nut first and then tighten the the other nut against it but first i want to eliminate play because i overdid it and it's a bit of a back and forth a bit of you need a few iterations to get it right and now what i'm doing is moving it just a bit uh watching to see what happens does the other not turn if it did i would have to hold it in place with another wrench and it is a bit fiddly especially if you're doing like i'm here doing it now without holding the whole structure in a vice but you get it done now i'm more fairly happy with the results and i'm trying now to tighten it so i'm unscrewing the inner nut and the outer lock nut is held in place it it doesn't move in this video but sometimes it will depending on what kind of parts you choose and here i'm trying to unscrew the the nut uh, a bit because it's still too tight now again but it wouldn't go so i had to loosen the lock nut then unscrew this one a bit just and now i'm testing okay it doesn't look bad as you're tightening it it will further be loosened a bit so i go for a bit too tight and then when i press it against the lock nut when i screw it in it will create a bit more play it will be a bit bit looser and it so it again it's a you you move it by quarter of a turn then test again making sure that it doesn't all turn and once you're happy you can finally tighten them to the to the final torque and then you need to put the spring in place and test if it works fine with the spring engage of course that's that's also important to test but i don't do that 
right away first I do it without the spring and here is how I'm putting it against the to, to hook it against the the brake uh, calipers the brake arms and testing if it works nicely it, lo it looked okay and that is the the basic principle here this other model has a different kind of attachment of the the spring but the principle is the same and it has this uh, outer nut the lock nut that has like a cap so it's not open-ended and that is okay if you are certain about how much the the threaded part will protrude but here i wasn't certain so i wanted to go with an open-ended nut so if i need to screw it in a bit further i don't get hit against the the cap uh, against the, the the bolt so pre preventing me from eliminating all the play because the other side is fixed in this with this uh, setup the part that i use so i cannot adjust it from the other end so i wanted to play it safe at the cost of looking a bit different uh, for me it doesn't even look any worse it's it's cool and this is the the finished product the assembled and now i can for any future maintenance go with either lubricant uh, like that liquid thin or reassemble it, uh, disassemble it again and put grease there are pros and cons to each and you can choose for your own preference i would say that if you want to be really thorough and it's like a, a general rule that you do that with grease but i've gotten away with using even thin lubricants on things that I don't want to disassemble and it worked for years so both is good and this is how it's done hope you hope it helped you that's the video